wouldn't you say? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, they're a, they're an exceptional lot. You know, there's. I mean, you could pick it. You could pick anything out there. Uh, that incidentally is charge along the one we haven't seen, and uh, here again there's a colour point to notice because uh, uh, Mr. McIntyre's second colours, uh, Tony Ives, has a yellow cap on charge along. She was well behind in the Nell Gwyn. It'll need a miracle for her to reverse the form with Oso Sharp and Bella Calora. Number five, charge along. And uh, the only one we haven't seen, I think, now is Cashy Lagoon, written by Bruce Raymond. Uh, well, <coughs> uh, Ben Hanbury's uh, horses have had various little bits of trouble, but uh, this filly won the Rockfell Stakes speaking charge along last year. She's by Ile de Bourbon, and uh, she was a very good two-year-old. This is her first run of the year. She's said to be a bit highly strung, but who knows, she might run well. Number 11, Cashy Lagoon, was written by Bruce Raymond. Stable companion, of course, of Carla Dancer, who was the uh, leader of the free handicap. Both of them owned, owned by Mr. Ravi Tikhu. Uh, a quick look at the betting now. Uh, the favourite, at least, is uh, gone to two to one from nine to four, so coming in a little bit. Now, as they wind out, uh, I'd like to just run through them so that you get an idea of the colours. And they're led out by Tony Murray on Alba Haffrey. Uh, behind him in the seams is Eric Legree on Antarctica, blue with white seams. Behind that, the familiar colours with the spotted cap of Mr. Robert Sangster is Christy Roach on Aviance. Immediately behind there is Charge Along, Tony Ives in the second McIntyre colours uh, with epaulettes and a yellow cap. Behind that are the Aga Khan's colours, Greville Starkey taking Walter Swinburne's place on Daphena. Then in the spots, Lester Piggott on Michael Stout's other runner, Bella Colora, in the white spots on the black colours. Then in the stripes, Brian Rouse on Devon Defender, stripes with a light cap. Behind Devon Defender comes the colours of Captain Marcus Lemos, who we're so glad is uh, recovering from his heart attack, uh, Glory of Hera and Jeff Baxter. Behind Glory of Hera comes number 11, Bruce Raymond on Cashy Lagoon with the big blue diamond on the front of his yellow jacket. Then the familiar colours of Sheikh Mohammed, uh, Steve Cawthon wearing them, of course, on the favourite Oso oh Sharp. Behind Oso oh Sharp in the yellow with the green diamond comes Kay Sympatica, Mick Miller on Kay Sympatica. Uh, then uh, comes... <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, I've just heard that the Devon Defender is the best turned out horse. Uh, that's Pat Eddery. Uh, on trip teach. I was a little bit puzzled because the, the colours are a little bit difficult to recognise and slightly different from tri trip teach's usual colours. But uh, anyway, that is trip teach and Pat Edry. Behind those Richard Hills on Other Lang, whom he rides uh, for his father. Uh, the other <coughs> epaulette is Mr. McIntyre's Stella Grand, Ray Cochran on Stella Grand. And behind there, in the second Sangster colours, with the black cup, cat, and a big white face to recognise her by, is the second French filly, Villicaya. At least when I say the second French filly, as I've told you, there's a considerable puzzle as to which of these two is going to come out best, Antarctica or, or Villicaya. Now then, on the, on the parade, uh, oh so sharp, looking just nicely on her toes, um, it'll be a evidence of nerves if anything sweats today because there's a real cold wind. Well, Derek Thompson talked to Steve Cawthon before the race. Uh, he knows Steve thinks a lot of Oso Sharp and he asked how's she done since the Nell Gwyn? Well, the, the weather you know, has been a bit up and on but she's come a lot more in her coat. She's looking much better and um, she's been working very well. Um, She's a lovely filly and she hadn't really got, there's no real kinks in her arm. She's got a good temperament and she's very genuine. Uh, the only thing she is is a bit lazy, which I like because you always find a bit at the right end of the race. So you're very confident? I'm as confident as you can be when it comes to classics. I mean, it's the best fillies in the country and from France and Ireland coming up against her. But I think she's a very exceptional type of filly um, and I'm very hopeful. And... Uh, he would be a good judge of an exceptional filly, Walter. <laughs> yes, that's for sure. Well, you've ridden against her and you know how game she is. She's certainly going to take a lot of beating. The favourite, oh so sharp. Mm. 
the turning in the parade slightly nervy moment for a jockey <laughs> yes this this is um you know you, you'd rather get this part over with and 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 get on down you know because you it's also you know if, if you've got a dodgy one in the parade as well they get, get on their toes and it's against them really much more i suppose at a place like epsom than the than the at newmarket at least there they don't really have to have much nervous strain do they newmarket's not too bad um uh, you know epsom especially derby day there is, is terrible there, there's no, nobody behaving particularly badly, and as far as we could see in the paddock, nothing was sweating. There, there she is, Walter. That's yeah. where you ought to be. Yeah. Sad sight. Yes, um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure she'll go very, very well. Greville, of course, uh, won, won the 1,000 for your governor. Um, he Fair Sir Linnea, didn't he? He was second. Mm. Was he only second, he, he was he? was second for oh, oh, I'm Fair sorry. <coughs> she went on and won the Oaks. Of course, I'm so sorry. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely right. Well, uh, I haven't said uh, that I consider you extremely harshly treated. Don't let's go on with that now, but uh, I'm really sorry that that's Greville, not you, going down on the Aga Khan's Dafena. She's followed down by Bruce Raymond on Cashy Lagoon. On the outside there is Charge Along. Tony Ives in the distinguishing yellow cap on Charge Along. Um, the French filly over on the left with the uh, white cap. And on the right is K. Simpatica in the yellow colours. When I said the French filly, of course, I meant uh, an uh, Antarctica, uh, who's uh, on the left of your picture now. This is charge along in the yellow cap. Antarctica on the left of your picture now is a 10 to 1, 10 to 1 from 12s. Well, really fast ground. Uh, you don't think that's going to be against Dafena, do you, Walter? Um, being by Habitat, uh, they've, you know, most of them like um, a little bit of cut in the ground. Um, you know, provided it's not too firm, you know, it should be okay because um, you know, she, she's not sure to get the mile, and um, you know, the, it does help being good ground. Yes, I suppose there is. There's got to be some doubt about her stamina, and uh, of course, quite a considerable doubt about the stamina of Aviance, uh, who is uh, very closely related to El Gran Senor, uh, who won the 2,000 guineas so brilliantly last year. But on the other hand, Aviance has uh, only raced over seven and six furlongs last year, hasn't had a run yet this season. And uh, clearly, one of Christy Roach's problems, as he said, uh, is going to be to bury her and uh, save her speed for the end. In the foreground, though, in the white noseband is Alba Hathry. And this is one who I don't think Tony Murray will bury this time, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think um, they'll go back to the tactics that, um, that worked for them last year, which is her one style is um, go, you know. Um, she, she's very tough and... And I, I, I feel sure she'll be there at the end. Not necessarily, I suppose, bang in front from the start, but probably setting sail about three furlongs out. Correct, yes. Um, you know, but, but he'll be very handy and, uh, and, as you said, setting sail early. Here's the favourite, obviously very, very calm. She's got a marvellous temperament. There she is, uh, oh so sharp. And uh, now for a slightly more nervous sight, let's join McCrick. Confidence has flooded back into this oh so sharp. All the top of the head, nine to four went. It's two to one on the rails. The boards here are showing seven to four, so the public money has come in for oh so sharp. But I'll go down your car and see if your horse that you fancy is mentioned. Al Bahathri, 12 to 1, has touched 14 Al Bahathri. Antarctica, 10 French fillies have won this century. Antarctica's quite strong at 10 to 1 and 11 to 1. 10 monkeys was laid in one bet. Aviance on the slide. It's out 8 to 1 now, Aviance. Though in the last three decades, two fillies have won who'd never run before this season. The 50s, the 60s and the 70s. Each decade, two fillies came out and did what Aviance is trying to do. Bella Calora out to 7 to 1, Bella Calora. Defane is also out the 7th one. Both those from 6th the Michael Stout fillies. We come to the strength of Oso oh Sharp. That's the big loser for every bookmaker on the track. He's going to lose it if the Oso oh Sharp wins. One punter alone has had 4,000 to win 8,000 in a single bet. Um, the best bet against it is 18 trip teak. All the 8 to 1, the 7 to 1 is now 13 to 2 trip teak. That's the clear second favourite. Billy Kyler is 10 to 1, but the money is in for Oso oh Sharp. Will she become the 32nd favourite to win the 1,000 guineas this century? Well, it's entirely possible. 
Walter, uh, where, the, with as big a field as this, where would you prefer to be drawn? Um, I'd like to be drawn high. Um, you know, j just there's anywhere from 10 on to 18 is ideal. You know, you can kind of cover your horse a bit. Do you think and they'll split up or will, or will they race in one group over on the stand side? I think they'll just go in the one group. Um, and, or, and over here, over on this side, on the sand side. Um, I, d I don't know which side I... Um, no, I don't know which are. side the stalls are yeah. either. Uh, um, uh, they they keep changing. <coughs> They're on the far side. The stalls are on the far on side. The far. So uh, that makes a bit of a difference. It does. Um, I say our filly Defane has drawn one, which, uh, you know, ideally she we could have done with her being drawn in a bit more. Would have been a help for Gravel. Yes. Well, I mean, he will he will certainly race a, race along the far rails. He wouldn't want to come across, would he? No, he'll um, he'll uh, he, he'll be dropping in. Now, talking of uh, Daphna, there's Devon Defender, with whom you had that tremendous battle at Salisbury, and uh, Derek Thompson talked to David Ellsworth beforehand, and uh, he's been pretty hopeful uh, of getting his revenge. I think. Uh, so it's completely different ground today to that we we were uh, exposed to at New uh, at Salisbury, but uh, I've no reason to believe she won't cope with the faster ground. You're an outsider. Are you a lively outsider? Do you think? Well, I think so, but I'm prejudiced. Obviously, I train the filly, but she's a very high-class filly, and um, if she's good enough to beat the Fina, it still may not be good enough to win the race. But uh, we, we we have a sporting chance. Well, the best of luck to him. There they are, Dafina on the left, Devon Defender on the right, and uh, Antarctica in the middle. But a look now at the betting. Esther Sharp, the two to one favourite, opened up at seven to four. Dafena is seven to one, opened eleven to two. Bella Calora and Trip Teach also seven to one, and Aviance eight to one from sevens. Bilakaya steady at ten to one. Antarctica also tens this time from twelves, and Alba Hatchery eleven to one from twelve to one. Devon Defender 33 to 1, Cashy Lagoon, Sella Grande, Que Simpatica, all at 50s, Merle, Ulla Lang, Glory of Hedda, Hilly and Charge Along are all at 66 to 1, all 17 are quoted. So the 17 fillies are down at the start for this, the 172nd running of the historic classic. It's a cold wind blowing. It's good to firm ground officially, but with the wind behind them, it'll do very, very fast ground. It's likely to be a fast run and a very tightly contested race. And if you've just tuned in, let's introduce you a new voice in the commentary box alongside John Oxy, Walter Swinburne, who should now be in the saddle on Defena. Because of his suspension, he's up with John in the commentary box. And John, how's he bearing up? He's bearing up marvellously, both with uh, my mistakes and with the bitter disappointment of not being down there with the others. Uh, I suppose, Walter, if you weren't riding Daffay, now this is the one you'd choose, or is it not? Well, obviously, you know, she's going to take a lot of beating, and um, and so she should. I mean, her form, she's done nothing wrong. She's very tough. Oh, so sharp, of course, yes, we're talking about yes. it. Yes, um, you know, she, she, she's done nothing wrong. Is there anything else you might like to ride? Bella. Bella Calora. Bella Calora, yes. Uh huh. So you think that uh, that defeat in the Nell Gwyn, it's not impossible that Bella Calora might oh, reverse that? Far from it. Um, you know, Bella Calora will give her a very, very tough race. She'll know she's had a race today. Oh, so sure. Yes. Well, a quick cry from McCrick, and they'll very soon all be in, and John Penny will take over. If they were returning the starting prizes now, it would be 85 to 40, oh, so sharp. Six and a half, 13 to two, triptych, seven to one, bar the two. And oh so sharp, the last one to be installed. They're under starter's orders and they're on their way. And as they start to settle down through the early stages, Alva Hathry, one of the first to go on, but Bella Calora now takes over. So Bella Calora now the leader, being tracked then by, on the near side, Cashy Lagoon, then just in behind them, then comes Stella Grand. Stella Grand is then followed by Case in Padiga, oh so sharp. And toward the rear of the field races Merle and the back marker to Fainer. Running now towards the six furlong from home marker, Bella Calora, still the leader from Stella Grand, then right up with the pace to his Cashy Lagoon, just in behind him, Case and Padded, then comes oh so sharp. They're running now towards the five marker, Bella Calora, the spot is colours on the far side, and on well on turns that one, Stella Grand, then on the near side, Cashy Lagoon, just in behind them comes Case in Padiga, and with that order back to Graham. 
New tactics for Bella Calora, the leader from Al Bahathri with a nose bank. Casey and Fatica just in behind them. Stella Grand in the blue jacket. Ella Lang behind that one. Then comes Gloria Hero and the favourite oh so sharp with the jockey with the white sleeves makes grand, but so too does Triptych in the pale blue jacket. Behind these comes Vilikaya. They've got just two and a half furlongs left to race in the general accident 1000 guineas and a wide open race too, with Triptych coming down on the very wide outside of oh so sharp, with up on the uh, inside Al Bahathri going for home. So too Bella Calora. More in the tank yet. They've got four furlong and a half to go. And Bella Calora regains the lead next to the rails from Al Bahathri in second place. Oh so sharp is third. Vilikaya is flying at the finish with a white face on the very wide outside but inside the final furlong Alba Hathri and Bella Calora very little to choose between the two Lester Pickett and Tony Murray Bella Calora and Alba Hathri it's a ding dong battle up towards the line a photo finish Alba Hathri and Bella Calora the nose so sharp and Vinikaya and then came uh, behind these charge along in fact the back marker last of all was Cashew Lagoon and so the outcome of this the general accident 1000 guineas a group one race it's gone to a photo a photo between Lester Pickett on Bella Calora number four, owned by Helena Springfield Limited, trained here at Newmarket by Michael Stout and uh, ridden by Lester Pickett. It's very, very close indeed. And there is the freeze frame. And I'm not so sure that Oh So Sharp isn't up there too. What a tremendous blitzing finish she's run to get up there. Now, let me take you through the photo here. On the far side in the spotted jacket, Bella Calora, the horse with the noseband is Al Bahathri. And with the white sleeves, that's Oh So Sharp. Three in the photo for this general accident, 1,000. News from the ring on how they bet in the photo. Very close betting in the photograph. They don't know. They take four to one Bella Calora. I can hear one bookmaker thinking Bella Calora is just one. And three to one against El Bahathri. So they take four to one Bella Calora. If she's won, she's a seven to one chance. El Bahathri is an 11 to one chance. The favorite oh so sharp is two to one. They're calling four to one against El Bahathri. They think down here that Bella Calora has just won the 1,000 guineas. Yeah. Well, I shall have a very happy man up in the hutch with me here because Walter was shouting for Bella Calora all through the, this marvellous finish. And at this stage, it's become a two-horse race. It very soon becomes a three-one. But Bella Calora, did you expect her to make the running, Walter? Well, she's a bit free and uh, ideally, um, uh, I think Lester would have liked to lead. But she was pulling a bit early on. And I think the wise thing, he, he did the wise thing by not fighting her and, and, and letting her stride. But now Tony Murray's taken the lead on Alba Hathri and the white nose band. And look back there at Steve Cawthon, the no-so sharp. He's got still four or five lengths to make up, I think. Trip Teach looks a danger on the outside. But Alba Hathri at this stage has got her nose in front. And Bella Calora heard you shouting and fights back. Yeah, she's marvellous, you know. She, as I said, you know, just sticking her neck out there. Look at her. She doesn't know when she's beat. But you've got to give credit to Oso oh Sharp. Still three lengths down, really running on as they meet the rising ground. And indeed to Alba Hasri too. She's run a magnificent, courageous race. Uh, Tony Murray getting everything out of her. But Bella Calora sticking out her nose. And on this side, Billy Kaya is coming. The result... Oh, so sharp as one. There's a huge row. The, fed, the result has just come up. Here's the winning challenge. Oh, so sharp, pushing her nose in front. Bad luck, Walter, but a tremendous performance. Ah, oh, fantastic. Um, I think Bella Calora is the hero of the race. You know, she was set off for me to make all the running and nearly hold on. But very fantastic, you know, gutsy performance by this filly. She looked beast and then to get back up on the line. Yes, as they say, she looked defeat in the face and stared it down. Tremendously game performance. They've always said that she would keep pulling out as long as it was needed, and that's exactly what she did. Oh, so sharp, uh, beautifully bred, of course. Uh, Sheikh Mohammed in the background there with the black beard. Uh, how delighted he will be because this is his first uh, classic victory. Not, of course, by any means the first classic victory for the Maktoum brothers, but Sheikh Mohammed, uh, who I think has more horses than any of the others, uh, this is his first classic victory. What a thrill it must have given him. So, oh so sharp, the two to one favorite winner of this group one, 1,000 guineas. And I, <laughs> I seldom, I don't think we'll ever see a more exciting race. And Steve Cawthon, if he hadn't have won, I think he could have been judged to have been slightly unlucky. Just perhaps marginally squeezed out by Triptych inside the final furlong. 
but she really has pulled the irons from out of the fire. She's got there when it